the Lyle Barnett on September the 23rd of 2015 was 10 foot tall, bulletproof. You couldn't tell me nothing. And I was racing Radio Versus the World, which is the pinnacle. It's like that's that's top fuel of small tire outlaw drag racing. I was you could you couldn't tell me anything. Um, I realize that now. I realize just how precious not only life but the things that you and I take for granted every day. We got two feet to walk on. We got two hands to feed ourselves. You know and a mouth to tell a story, and not everybody has that. And now it is time for Lyle Barnett. He's coming up here on the right-hand side of the racetrack. Both cars off the starting line strong, and look at Hancock pulling to a 390. Oh, man, look at the fire right side. Lyle Barnett is in massive trouble. Barnett's car completely engulfed in flame, now heading across the racetrack. Huge impact with the left-hand wall. Barnett still burning down there. He is in a heap of trouble in that race car, trying to get it stopped. Oh, boy, please remain where you are. Barnett's in trouble. Oh, this is as bad a fire as I have ever seen in 20 years of doing this. There was a time probably 20 seconds into that, that I knew for a fact I was dead. I'd accepted the fact that I was gonna die in a race car, and it was just a matter of how long it was gonna take for me to die. The thoughts go down, and this will be an emotional one if Lyle Barnett in the tooth turner can then get down ahead of John McDonough. And John McDonough smokes the tires, ladies and gentlemen, Lyle Barnett, your first champion. The new dad, which is, number one on that list. Uh, I'm a U.S. Nationals champ, and my wife would kill me, but that, that's a, it, it rides a close second to being married to my wife, so I didn't say that for real, babe. I didn't mean it, but I did. Dang, you forgot your, your most precious victory of all. What's that? Life. Oh, yeah. The Lyle Barnett that existed before I was burnt uh, is not the Lyle Barnett that many people know today. Um, unfortunately, well, you can look at this two ways. I guess I could say, unfortunately, most of you know me because of that. Um, but while it was the worst day of my life, um, it also has created a platform um, that has turned me into who I am today. Lyle, we can't even comprehend the challenges you must have faced after your drag racing incident in 2015. With the weight of that Wally in your hands, talk about the courage it takes to get behind the wheel of a race car. It doesn't have anything to do with me. The good Lord up there kept me around five or six years ago now, and, and I never thought I would be here, but you know, there's some good people that have gotten me to this point. My family, first and foremost, and everybody that stood behind me in 2015 when I almost lost my life in South Georgia. On September the 24th of 2015, uh, I was on the receiving end of, of one of the worst door car fires that modern day drag racing has ever seen. And I survived. Um, the odds were definitely stacked against me. It's not something that 40-year-old Lyle probably would have survived. Um, I was, fortunately, I was 24 years old, um, in pretty good health, and uh, and I had a lot there. The, the support system that existed from the drag racing community uh, it never wavered. Um, the prayers came in by the minute, and, uh, and there were a couple different things that worked there. One, the doctors and the medical staff at the JMS Burn Center at the Doctors Hospital in Augusta, Georgia, um, I consider them angelic. Uh, I tell them all the time that they are 100% the reason that medically I'm here today uh, and the good Lord above had a huge hand in that as well. Um, you know, I burnt for 28 seconds, Bobby, and <clears throat> that doesn't seem like a long time. 
but I was on fire all 28 of those seconds. And uh, there was a time, probably 20 seconds into that, that I knew for a fact I was dead. I'd accepted the fact that I was gonna die in a race car and it was just a matter of how long it was gonna take for me to die. Um, it got to the point, obviously, that it was just more than I could stand. So I decided I was getting out. You know, I didn't know if the car had stopped um, and I didn't, quite frankly, I didn't care. Uh, I rolled out of that thing uh, and it had stopped. The safety safari or the medical crew there that was at South Georgia Motorsports Park that night did an unbelievable job uh, of attending to me, getting the car put out and getting me wrapped up, ready to rip out of the racetrack to head to the hospital. Um, laying on the track, it, I didn't, it didn't really look like it was that bad, according to others. Um, about four hours later, uh, I was fighting for my life uh, in a life flight from Valdosta, Georgia to Augusta. And the next two months of my life are a blur for the most part. Um, and there was a time there where I wasn't going to make it. There was a time there that I had a chance. There was a time there that I was going to spend the rest of my life on a vent. Uh, and then there was a time when they realized that miracles had happened in that hospital. And I went from, you know, near death to fully functioning and, and healthy lungs. So, um, you know, and, and I owe that I can never thank the people the good Lord, obviously, first and foremost, but the medical staff at the JMS Burn Center, man, um, Dr. Mullins, who led the charge there, is no longer with us, unfortunately, um, but that man performed miracles on me, you know, and uh, and I'm blessed to just to be sitting here, honestly, you know, the rest, the rest of the story has kind of written itself, and it's been a hell of a ride so far. Was there a point in that aftermath that you wanted to be dead? There was never a point that I thought death was the better option. There was just a point that I had had enough. Um, man, I know those, those may sound very similar, but there's, there's a difference in my opinion. Um, I had just had enough of the pain. I would had enough of, of going to sleep and being operated on, and I'd had enough of going to the whirlpool and having my burn scraped. Like, you know, it's just, the mental recovery from that injury was 10 times um, what the physical recovery was because the physical recovery was what it was. I could only get better if I worked hard. <clears throat> the mental recovery was something I fought all day, every day, you know, and, and I, I'm not going to say I wasn't a believer in PTSD. I guess I just didn't understand it, but I do now. Um, that's it is no joke you know and if i guess we'll turn this for just a second if there's anybody out there who has experienced a hardship in life and think that maybe that it is that what we have talked about is the better outcome um there's light at the end of all tunnels and you just got to reach out for help bobby it's not there's people out there that'll help you um i got a service dog right you know and then you Ninja B, as I call her, was better than any medication I took during that recovery, man. It was unbelievable, just the unconditional love that that dog, and still to this day, right? I don't use her as a service dog anymore, but man, like, I was in a dark place, Bobby. I was, it was just not good. You know, there were, I had, I'm not, we won't go into the thoughts I had. It just wasn't good, man. And I, you know, my family was worried my now wife who was my girlfriend at the time you know we were dating we dated before the accident uh she is a nurse um and god bless her a nurse a nurse practitioner now way smarter than i could ever pray to be um but i had medical support from her my stepmother and my stepfather um all professionals in the medical field you know and and it was just 
man, it was. I don't know how anybody goes home at, from the hospital where you have 24-hour medical care somewhere where you there's your maybe your loved ones and nothing's wrong. I mean, we all have different professions, but where your loved ones have zero medical experience because I had medical care 24 hours a day when I was in the hospital. And I had it 24 hours a day when I went home, and I needed it, you know. And there, my family, I got a lot of support, but my family, dude. Uh, unbelievable and I just I cannot thank them enough um, for just sticking with me you know because they stuck with me through the dark times when I just wanted to stay shut up in my room and by myself and I didn't really care to talk to anybody and not that they forced it on me but they just let me know that they were there and once I finally realized that's what I needed and I reached out you know it it it, it turned me around but you know the between them and the dog <laughs> Uh, there, there's no doubt that they are part of the reason that I was able to have as successful of a recovery as I did and, and honestly had the drive to get back to the racetrack and Lando, continue doing what I love. You know, I've devoted now yeah, most of my life to this. Roll in, set the brake, roll the throttle on the mat. Will the last trophy of the year, the E3 Spark Plug Pro Modified Series, be a turbo driver or blower driver? They're away on a green. Oh, 11 reaction time for Lyle Barnett. And a 581 to a 579. Lyle Barnett wins it on a little baby hole shot. Everybody said you can't win with a turbo car. They forgot to tell the folks at Elite and they are losing their minds down on the starting lines. Tell me about how you guys got it done. You know, we just stuck it. We stuck with it all year long through the struggles and the trials and tribulations. We all stayed together and got this thing done. Back, because it's just the recorder. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you were in a dark place, you had thoughts, and you wasn't going to go there. Is that because life is so good now, you couldn't imagine you thought that way, or you're embarrassed by the way you thought? Uh, a little bit of both. So, I, I don't know, I don't want to say I'm embarrassed, but I am, because what I want to say is that I'm stronger than that. And I, I, I powered through it, but there are people out there that are in the same place that I was in, and, and I, I just know what it feels like, you know, and I'm proud of where I am today. I did not do it alone. You know, I, I cannot emphasize enough how much support I had. Um, I'm not proud of where I was because I had the support system around me to bring me out of that, and it took me a couple months to realize it. Um, I'm not proud of where I was, but I'm proud of where I am now. So, yeah, you know, I think we all, you can put two and two together and know what I'm talking about when I say that I had some bad thoughts, right? Did you contemplate suicide? I'm not gonna say it didn't cross my mind. But I, you know, I don't, man, I, I don't know. You know, it's, I'm not gonna say it did and I'm not gonna say it didn't. Um, I just knew that when I got in a dark enough place that that was even a possibility that I needed help. You know, like this is a fight. I'm, I can no longer fight on my own, right? So that's what I did and, you know, and, and it worked. You know, I leaned on the Lord. Um, <clears throat> I leaned on the medical professionals that went to school to help people like that. My dog, you know, and my family and we powered through it, you know, and it was short lived. Thank God I didn't deal with it for years on end. I dealt with it for a couple months, but it was, you know, something that I was able to power through and, um, <clears throat> falling into the dark place is one thing you know and it's easy to do climbing back out of it it's all about what's in here you know it's how much fight you got in you you know and and that only that only helps to a certain extent um you gotta ask for help dude it, you just i was too proud i was too tough even after the fire i was too tough to ask for help for too long um, and once I realized that 
you know, uh, and, and ask for help. I'm not gonna say it was easy, but the dark place was something I didn't think about being in anymore. It, it was a place I thought about getting out of. Um, you can look it up on YouTube, the Gaither Vocal Band. Uh, they have a, <clears throat> a song on theirs, and it says, it, it, sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes it, take, it takes a mountain, sometimes a troubled sea. Sometimes it takes somewhat of a tragedy, if you, know, if you will, to get a hold of me. Um, and that's what it took, was a mountain for me to realize you know, then. And I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that I may have been headed in a direction that God didn't necessarily want me to go. You know, and I'm not, by no means am I saying God set me on fire, right? But it was time for me to get a reality check, you know, and that I'm not above what he is capable of doing. And it was time to reel me back in, you know, and, and I'm telling you, man, no, uh, no other episode, nothing in my life even compares how humbling that experience was to know that tomorrow is never, ever promised, ever. So, on day one of your step back to a new, new normal, do you remember the first time that God spoke to your heart? Yeah, I was laid in my mom's bed <clears throat> in the house I grew up in, and somebody sent me. Sometimes it takes a mountain. I bet I watched it 50 times in a row, and I cried for hours by myself. I was still wanting to be by myself at that time. I cried for hours. I sent it to my dad. I sent it to my now wife. And I watched it over and over and over again. And I decided that night that I ain't done, you know. I didn't know if I wanted to race again. I just knew that I wanted to return to the racetrack I wanted to go back to the one where I nearly lost my life. I wanted to walk down the right lane at South Georgia Motorsports Park, you know, like, I ain't done. You know, and, and I did that. I went back to South Georgia in February of 2016. Um, I walked down that right lane with Tyler Carl Snow, one of my best friends. And I knew then that I at least wanted to burn in one more time there, you know. Not a day in my life have I ever thought, should I really be doing this? Should I really be drag racing again after what I so dearly loved nearly took my life? I, not one time have I questioned it. I knew that I knew that's where I belonged. We're here at uh, Lights Out 8. Very emotional moment down here at the top end. Lyle Barnett, after your horrendous fire at, at No Mercy 6, You've made a comeback, and you've not only made a comeback, but you have dominated the Leaf Spring class here. Is there anybody you want to thank? Um, you know, I'll start with the good Lord, man. Um, you know, I almost died here. To come back like this is cool, you know. 
it's something we've been working hard for and you know Jason Digby's poured a lot of time effort and money into this thing and, and what did had you think when meeting. you won right. your first race when it became apparent you were going to win the first time back out after such a such a horrific incident yeah you, you know that's that that win at South Georgia in February of 2017 was about as if you hear people talk about a full circle moment, you know, and I could not think of a better example in my opinion, right? At the same track that I nearly lost my life at, we least we reset the Leaf Spring World Record like two or three times, and I won the last Leaf Spring shootout that there's ever been at the same racetrack I nearly lost my life at, you know. And to me, you just couldn't have rode it any better, you know, and it. I don't know if it, I guess you could say it sounds a little conceited because it, it was it was me and my win, but I couldn't have wrote it any better myself, you know, and it, and it sure seemed like that was the place to do it, you know, and prove that he's still in control up there, you know, and and it was just so special. One foot in front of the other. Only got one trophy at the end of the racetrack. Chris Thorne, left. Lyle Barnett, right. No steps back. I don't care what hits you, what hurdles you come across, what storms is what we called them in the hospital. I don't care what storms you encounter. It's one foot in front of the other moving forward. Red light. Hang on, hang on. Lean on, the, lean on those around you do not try to fight it on your own and in my particular situation if the physical therapist tells you to do it do it twice just one foot in front of the other moving forward not backwards there's nothing good back there what's behind you is behind you and you can't do anything to change it Thorne goes double oh seven red and Lyle Barnett was really flirting with disaster down there on the center line. He shut her down, he kept it on his side and he picks up a U.S. Nationals win. Lyle Barnett, probably from uh, the quarter mile all the way down here. And Lyle, you were already emotional in the semifinals. And when you think of the lows that your team has had this season, no one knows them better than you do. Holding that Wally at the U.S. Nationals, does it take away some of that pain? It most certainly does. Um, you know, <clears throat> I got to give kudos to that team that stands on the starting line behind me. To my son, Nash Douglas at home, buddy, I'm bringing this one to you, bud. I love you. Melissa, I love you. Thank you all so much. Uh, these fans that came out here today, thank you for spending your hard-earned money and your time with us. We really appreciate it. And uh, LBR and Elite Motorsports and Modern Racing just won the U.S. Nationals! The motto I live by is it is what it is, and it's going to be what it's going to be. Accept it, find a new normal, and go that way.